So it means that when the speeds become more than the Galilean transformation phase, it becomes invalid. And when the speed becomes exactly the speed of light, of course it will not be valid anymore. So we will have to correct this situation. Because the speed, the, there is no minimum limit, but the speed is having a maximum limit. When you go closer to the speed, what will happen? The Galilean or the Newtonian mechanics or Galilean transformation will be no more valid. So now we just want to cover this situation. Let's come back to the situation again of S and S prime. Let's say that we are having the frames S prime S here and S prime here. This is S prime. Okay. And now this one is stationary while this one starts at speed let's say V. This is the speed with which it starts. And after a while there is and we say that not only their location means we can put the problem on let's say on the coordinate system that the, their space measurement is not right here or we say that their time measurement is not right here. So what we did here, we just synchronized them with respect to time. And we just started from the same location, constant speed, it's an inertial frame of reference. And let's say an incident is occurring here, an event is occurring here. So how the one will measure Let's say it is the flash of light. <coughs> okay. It's a flash of light, and this flash of light is coming to the two frames. This will measure the speed of it, and it will measure the S frame will measure the speed of it as C equals x over. T. While this speed will be measured by this one as well, and what the S prime will measure according to that, it will measure it x prime by t prime. Now we know that both speeds are the same because they will measure the same, and now here we know that x prime is not equal to x because x and x prime are not equal. What about t and t prime? They may also not be equal. Like earlier we said that x and x prime are not equal, like the space measured by one is not equal to the space by the other. In Galilean transformation we did this thing. And but we assume in the Galilean transformation that t is equal to t prime. The time both measure will be the same. But when we measure the acceleration of the, you can say, observed in the two frames, then the acceleration was measured to be the same, which created a confusion here. So here x and x prime are not the same, then it means t and t prime are also not the same, they are different as well. So what the two frames will be asking each other, that the measurement you do is not right. The speed is coming out right, but you are not measuring the space rightly. And this will also be a claim that the time is also not measured right. Because C will have to be C. My cousin will only prove this thing that this speed is constant.
irrespective of the motion of observer arm. This is the postulate of the special theory of relativity. That this and this are to be constant. So A space is relative, means we sign the Galilean transformation, space is relative. So time is relative as well, it is also not an absolute quantity. And this is what that Lorentz saw. Because earlier there were some other scientists, they were also working on them, and I will tell you when we will derive the Lorentz transformation, that who did what. So here, let's say that the the S prime is blaming S for x and t for space and time, while the S is blaming S prime for space and time version of it. Both blame each other, but how much one is right and the other is wrong, we don't know. But let's say that both are wrong and as we have written that x prime is equal to x minus vt. So start from here. x prime is equal to x minus vt. This was the Galilean measurement. Let's say the error in this measurement is x prime equal to gamma times x minus vt. Now gamma will tell us about the error in their measurement. And from the same equation, I can write that x is equal to x prime plus vt. I mean from the same equation. But now it is x prime in terms of x. And let's say the error here is again gamma and this is x prime plus vt. But we will also now in order to differentiate it from that one, we are writing that let's say this I write is ut and this is the velocity I consider is ut in order to differentiate it from the Galilean transformation. This is x prime equal x minus ut, then x prime will be equal to x minus ut. And here it is x equal x prime ut, but it is not t prime because now the time can also be different. Is x and x prime are not the same? So we don't assume that t and t prime are the same because we came into confusion in the earlier cases. And this one is ut prime. Clear? So if this is the situation, then multiply this and this. Multiply x prime with x. What we will get? x prime with x. So this will become gamma square and this will be x minus ut multiplied with x prime plus ut prime. And this is equal to gamma square. This is x prime x to multiply and then plus x ut prime, the second term being multiplied, then this x prime ut minus x prime ut and minus, minus plus minus in u square t t prime, right? So after their multiplication I got this thing and now here just write the two variables here and the two variables that we have that t is equal to x over u t equal x over u while what about t prime t prime is x prime over u and now I assume here 
date. What both of them were measuring? They were measuring the speed of light. So their measurement T and T prime are different for their measurement. So I say that this is x over c and this is t prime x prime over c. So I have taken this term is a constant here and then x and x prime are different because from my assumption because what c was measured by this one here it was x over t. So t will be equal to x over c and from here x prime over t prime so t prime will be x prime over c. So I just put these assumptions here and then x, x prime is equal to gamma square and x prime x plus x u and t prime. What is t prime? t prime is x prime over c and minus x prime u and t is x over t minus u square and x over c and x prime over c. Right? I have just put the value of t and t prime in this equation. Now from here, let me just reorder them. Gamma square. So this is x x prime plus x x prime u over c minus x u over okay this is okay this is x over c field. because here we are having this is the third term so x prime u and x over c for this one so u over c minus x into x prime u square over c square right and now divide both sides by x and x prime so what we will get we will get here 1 equal gamma square this will become 1 this will become plus u over c this will become minus u over c and this will become minus u square over c square while plus u over c and minus u over c are cancelling so we got that this thing is equal to gamma square 1 minus u square over c square R from here I can write that gamma is equal to 1 over 1 minus u square over c square square root and this comes out to be the error the two frames are making in their measurement with respect to space and time and this we call is This is the Lorentz transformation. This is the Lorentz transformation. So how our equation will modify? Earlier, this gamma is equal to one here. So x prime was equal to x minus vt or ut just to differentiate it from the Galilean transformation so we have written u instead of v means it is the same thing if I write there gamma equals to 1 minus v square over c square where v is the frame velocity while c is the velocity they are measuring Right? Here we have just turned it into U. So gamma is not something that we defined. 
gamma is something we derive mathematically. That if both the frames are having an inner inversion rate of x and t, space and time, then the error will be equal to this, the value of gamma. And from here, what about gamma? If the frame speed means the speed at which the frame is moving, if that speed is much, much less than the speed of light, then V over C will go to zero. Like V over C will be very less and V over C whole square will be further less. So it will almost go to zero. And 1 minus 0, 1 over 1, and gamma is equal to 1. So we will get to the Galilean transformation. If the speeds are small, the speeds are not that huge. So here, whatever we had, this was the low speeds. The Galilean transformation became invalid when we went towards high speeds. So here the same thing we have denied mathematically. When, when gamma will be effective, when gamma will show its role, it will show its role when you will have the speed of your frame comparable to the speed of light. Means when it will exactly equal to that one, then this gamma will become undefined. So this transformation is not valid for that speed. But when we will be less than C, then this number will be some fraction. And from one you subtract, let's say, I assume that V is 0.5 C. Then it will be equal to 1 minus 1 and 0.5 so it will be 0 0.5 0 0.5 square will become 0.25 and 1 minus 0.25 will become 0 0.7 or something and then 0 0.7 will just when it will go up then it will be approximately 1.4 then gamma will show itself and gamma will correct the relation between x and x prime means space and gamma will correct the relation between t and t prime as well. No time is no more absolute here. Time is also relative. Galilean transformation was assuming time to be an independent entity but here Time also comes as relative and from here we can calculate some equations like for example uh, I do calculate for t prime then t prime t prime is equal to t minus v over c square x and gamma here. Now when our speed will be just comparable to the speed of light, high speeds we are talking. T prime, T prime is the time which is measured by the moving frame. T here, this T is being subtracted by a number. This is also greater than 1. So this comes out to be less. And this gives that the two times are no more the same. Is the Galilean transformation told us that the two space coordinates are not the same? Here, this told us that time is also relative. It is different for two frames. Time is different for a stationary frame and time is different for the moving frame. And 
when we say a moving frame, so whichever frame will be moving it will, for the other, the moving frame clock will run slower. But you know there is no absolute rest. There is no absolute rest, so everyone will consider that the other one clock is running slower. Because every observer in a given frame, in an inertial frame of reference, consider itself stationary while the other frame is moving. And it will see that the other frame clock is running slower compared to uh, its clock. Okay. 